on here tonight. But he had front cut Shetkov with a monstrous save. Sauce from Suzuki to create that chance from the goal line. Now a shorthanded chance. Stahl catching up to it. Stahl goes in. He scores! Shorthanded. The captain has put Carolina in the lead. one nothing. Well... Welcome to the Canes Corner Podcast, everyone. I am Adam Gold, and that was a very workmanlike, professional 3 nothing win over the Montreal Canadiens on the road. As Carolina can now just exhale for a little bit. Seven games left in the run-in to the end of the regular season, and all of the jockeying for position will be done. Carolina now gets four whole days off. Second time this has happened. That happened at the very beginning of the month. But, man, this has been a busy month. 15 Hurricanes games will have been played in the month of March. And I believe 14 of them came in a 26-day, something like that, 26-day stretch, 27-day stretch. Uh, Two different bouts of... Uh, seven games in 12 days, just absolutely, I mean, slammed all month. We are brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. No place like it. Sammy Hanner's crew do a great job. You should check them out for all of your home exterior uh, improvement needs. Got a lot of things going on. We got basketball going on as the ACC is trying to get uh, one team into the final four. Uh, Right now, Clemson is hanging in there with Alabama. If that game goes final, because why not? I mean, we're doing this live on YouTube. You come to us after every Hurricanes game, usually around 45 minutes after the final horn. By the time we get through with the postgame show, this is our intimate, more personal Post game show, uh, but we'll uh, we'll try to keep you up to date with what's going on. Um, all right, so uh, first of all, let me just offer this bit of gratitude. When the Hurricanes clinched on Thursday night at uh, PNC Arena in a four nothing win of the Red Wings, it was as one commenter called called it a uh, like a state of the franchise address. It was probably the easiest post-game podcast I've ever done, uh, especially as we've kind of transitioned to doing these live on YouTube, um, because it was really just about taking everything in. The game was the game. It was, wasn't was the best game Carolina's played. There wasn't a ton spectacular about the game on Thursday night in the win over the the uh, Detroit Red Wings, just like there wasn't anything spectacular about tonight's 3-0 win. Uh, we're going to talk about some cool things that happened, uh, but it was more about this is where we are. And I, I know there were a lot of people that uh, that liked it, that uh, you know could, could get on the wave, same wavelength with me and uh, just kind of appreciate what this franchise has become which is kind of a model. And while this was the first time that Carolina decided to jump in with both feet at the trade deadline, and I have criticized their inability or unwillingness to do so in past years, boy, did they do it right. And that's one of the things we are going to talk about uh, here uh, on this edition of the Canes Corner podcast. Um. But again, I just want to appreciate, I want to thank you because uh, I got a lot of comments about it. Uh, whether you hit me on Twitter at a gold fan, uh, I got a couple of emails about it. Nobody gets that many, that much email anymore from, from people who are listening or watching or whatever. Uh, but you could always email me as well. But if you can always reach me on Twitter at a gold fan, I try to respond to as many people as possible, uh, if not all. Um, uh, but you could always email me. Uh, a gold at nine 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 the fan dot com. Um, and there's also people who comment here in the chat, and we're going to read a couple of comments here, uh, and also um, kind of um, make comments when they give us reviews on Apple or Spotify. 
uh, or wherever you get your podcast. And it is available just in regular podcast form. So let's get to a couple of things that at least jump out to me uh, about all of this. And once again, shouts to all of you who are uh, watching, listening in uh, Adelaide, in Perth, California, Virginia Beach, all over the place. Finland, we got got them everywhere. Uh, and, And I wish I spoke Finnish. But you know what I do? Sebastian Ahdas Samoy, kuuntelet tällä hetkellä Canes Corner podcastia. That's Sebastian Aho. That's uh, uh, you're listening to the Canes Corner podcast, uh, only said in Finnish. Um, and we're going to get to, but why don't we just do it since we're here? So I mentioned the trade deadline in Carolina jumping in with both feet. And obviously, Jake Gensel, Evgeny Kuznetsov, uh, what we're talking about. Kuznetsov has kind of uh, hit a little bit of a valley here. And we talked about hitting the wall. I thought he was better tonight. I thought he and Natchez, mostly because of Natchez and Martinuk, were better tonight. And it's going to be this way with Kuznetsov. He'll eventually get back to what he was the first four or five games uh, when he got here, when all the adrenaline was pumping through him. Remember, he went about a month with doing nothing. So it was there was going to be a wall hit. He didn't even ramp up to get here. He just showed up, right? So it's going to happen. We're going to have, you know, Kuznetsov getting back to the high level that he was playing at when he first got here. So we're going to have fun with that. But Jake Ensel is one of those guys. He is one of the absolute best scoring wingers in the sport. And he hasn't, he's only scored two goals and he's gone, I think, eight or eight or so without one. But he's still been playing absolutely great. So this is what this line, I know they're on TV, they're calling it the dream line. Uh, we had a, uh, a podcast listener call it the jag line. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but this is over the last nine games. And you go back to the game in Toronto uh, about two weeks ago. When in this middle of the second period, Rod put them together. So we're just going to use the last nine games, including tonight, as a guide. So Sebastian Ajo, good at hockey, by the way. Eight goals, nine assists, 17 points, plus 13 in nine games. Seth Jarvis, eight goals, three assists, 11 points. That's that's 11 points, yeah, plus 13, nine games. Jake Gensel. Two goals, 13 assists, 15 points, plus 14 in those nine games. Now, that is just insane production. That's 43 points and a combined plus 40 in the last nine games for that two, for that trio. And they just look like they were made to play with one another. Um. I, I would be really surprised if Rod ever broke it up. Although you never know. Rod is certainly willing to change if he thinks things are going stale. And even in a given game, if the entire team isn't playing well, he'll shake it up. But I think something like this, he'd probably just go back to uh, right away. Uh, but man, they have played so well together. Uh, I would say, look, we can we can just point to points, right? I don't think Sebastian Ajo has played more than two meh games in a row all season long. And you talk about consistent brilliance. And every once in a while, he has flares of just dominant point production. You know, he went uh, 10 games averaging two points a game. He's basically on that same stretch now. I don't know how many multiple point games he's had in his last 10, uh, but I think it's six or seven. Uh, But he's got 85 points, a career high. He tied his career high with a two-point night against Detroit. So he's got, uh, I think it was was a two-point night or three-point night. He's got two points tonight, goal and an assist, now has 85 points with seven games left to play. Remember, he missed a handful of games with three games. I think he missed three games earlier in the season, so he hadn't even played every game. Uh, and 
who knows what he's going to end up. I mean, it might be stuck at 85. He might not get another point the rest of the season. What, what, regardless, either way, he's had an amazing season, hovering near 55% in the faceoff circle. I mean, part of the best penalty kill on earth right now. So you're talking about somebody who is elevating his game even with contracts coming to him, right? He's already paid. And the 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 one thing that this organization was never afraid of was would Sebastian be comfortable after getting paid? And the answer is, uh-uh. It's not what he's about. And the guy who plays to his right currently and probably will for a long time is cut from the same cloth, man. Seth Jarvis, when he gets paid, he is not going to get comfortable with where he is. He's going to strive to get better. He's going to get 30 goals. He's got 29 now. Yeah, it was an empty net goal. They count too. And for as hard as that dude works, he needs, he deserves a cookie here and there. But Jarvis has 29 points. He's already well past his career high in points, he's going to end up the season. He's not going to be, you know, at a point a game, but I'll bet you he's pretty close to 70 when it's over. Amazing. He's just a great player. And um, Tom Dundon and company, I know they're going to try and get eight years done because they don't want to come back and negotiate with him two years from now with the salary cap higher uh, and maybe players of his ilk, maybe a 35 to 40 goal annual scorer, you know, getting ten and a half million dollars a year. I'm sure they'd like to lock that up right now at eight and a half. We'll see if they can do that. Uh, Ajo's at nine point seven five. We'll see, we'll see if they could get uh, get Seth done. But holy cow, I begged them to do it last year. Begged them to do it last summer. They they didn't do it. We've been talking about this for a long time. The longer you wait, the more expensive it becomes. Jalen Chatfield, they should have done last summer. Steph Nason, they should have done last summer. I don't know. Uh, is what it is. But uh, Seth's going to be around here for a long, long time. No question about that. All right, so that line is obviously great. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Andre Svechnikov tonight, who I thought played a dynamite game. Um, yeah, he's not scoring goals. Uh, but today was the day, today was the game where I think we really saw Andre play well. Like he had some some scoring opportunities. He had five or six shots on goal, I think. But he just played the game properly tonight. He didn't do anything silly. Stayed out of the penalty box. Created opportunities. Uh, I think, now I don't ex expect it to stay together for an extended period. But I think he and Taravon and playing with Jordan Stahl is just a nice little combination right now. And I think ultimately when we get into the postseason, we're going to see Stahl and Martin Hook and Faust together again, unless Rod decides, you know what? I didn't think I was going to like it, but I kind of like it, at least for now. So however you can get Svechnikov playing this way, you do it. Because when he's playing this way, you saw what he does with puck retrievals and uh, being a general pest. And that's what you like about him. You don't want him to be a pest and commit penalties. You want him to be a pest, play the game the right way, create uh, turnovers, which he can do. You know, there are different ways to play defense, and he's a really good defensive player in the offensive zone in terms of going and hounding pucks and getting them back. So. Tonight was a great night, I thought, for Andre. And, you know, he didn't get one of my stars. And I'll tell you, I mean, it's pretty simple for me. Slavin, Slavin has ju just had one of the, you know, a typical Jacob Slavin game where things never materialize in your defensive zone because he's there making sure that, oh, I, I got it. Don't worry about it. You know, he is, uh, he is, he's the ultimate fire hose. And, so he was my third star. Aho was my second star. He was the best skater in the game. Uh, but Pyotr Kachetkov was great. We're going to get to Pyotr in a minute. Hold on one second. I need a uh, need to just take a quick sip of something. Hold on. 
Ah, oh, delicious. Um, not allowed to tell you that that's a peachful from uh, Highland Brewing in uh, Asheville. I'm not allowed to tell you that. I, I don't. I actually, I don't know if I am or not. I just pretended that I'm not allowed to tell you that. That's delicious. What a great, what a great summer beverage. It's actually my first first adult beverage in like a uh, month and a half. Not on purpose. Just. Uh, just worked out that way. All right, let's uh, let's let's continue this. I like to use that game in Ottawa as kind of the the turnaround game because that's where Piotr played his first of many great games. When Ottawa and Detroit, uh, it wasn't a back to back. I think they were separated by a day, but he played in both of those games. He's actually better in Detroit, I think than he was in Ottawa because in Ottawa, he was kind of all over the place. The Ottawa game where it was the, uh, the penalty shot, the poke check on Brady Kachuk where, uh, Kachuk went, you know, ass over tea kettle into the boards and then came back and, uh, had something to say to Piotr and Piotr wasn't hearing it, uh, heard it, didn't appreciate it. Uh, that was fun. That whole thing was fun, but the next game in Detroit, he was just solid and steady and controlled. He wasn't, he he wasn't, you know, on that emotional razor's edge. And that game, that that game against Ottawa was the beginning of the turnaround. Here's Carolina's record since that game. 33-9 and 6. 33-9 and 6. Kachetkov's numbers since then, I'd have to go back and do them exactly, but I'm just going to guess based on the six goals that were allowed in Washington. Um, and including tonight with 26 save shutout, his save percentage is probably between 925 and 930. Since then, uh, obviously all the wins and the hurricanes are 16, two and three on the road since that game in Ottawa, that game completely transformed the season. It solidified goaltending, which is the most important thing that you can do. Think about what the devil's had to deal with all year long. All that talent. Yeah, they had injuries. Everybody's got injuries. All that talent. And they couldn't get any traction, and they're going to miss the playoffs because their goaltending didn't recover the way Carolinas did. And frankly, if Carolinas hadn't recovered and the and they didn't make a move for a goalie, they could have ended up the same way. Now, Carolina's probably better you know, top to bottom than the Devils are. And they're certainly better on the blue line. So they probably would have made the playoffs. But man, the Devils just completely euthanized the season by not addressing their obvious need in goal until it was way too late. If you're going to trade for Jake Allen at the trade deadline, why didn't you trade for Jake Allen two months prior? Might have saved your season. Um. But the Hurricanes would have probably been in the same position if if Kachetkov hadn't turned it around. That game in Ottawa changed everything. Everything. It gave him confidence, and then he got on a run. He had some bad games. He had a game at home against the Islanders that weren't very wasn't very good. He obviously uh, had the third period against Winnipeg recently that wasn't very good. Um, again, I didn't hate him in Washington at all. I thought he was good in Washington. They just scored six times. Um, He was better in Washington, uh, giving up six, than he was in Pittsburgh when he gave up two. So the, I love, it's so good to see what happened from that game on. And once he started playing well, the team started playing better. And that's, you take your key, you, you, the, the goaltending just sets the tone. And while both guys are incredibly different, you couldn't have a, a, like a bigger range between personalities uh, in terms of the way they play. And maybe off the ice, too. Probably off the ice, too. But certainly, um, we're just talking about the way they play. You can't have a bigger range than where Kachetkov is, which is uh, somewhere out here dancing uh, at like a dead show. Uh, and then uh, Piotr, uh, then Freddie Anderson, who's got like, you know, a resting heart rate of one. 
I mean, they're just so different. But the team plays really well in front of both of them. And so, I mean, they have to adjust to based on who they're playing in front of. But especially when Piotr is kind of like he was tonight, which is just pretty much in control of everything he's trying to do. The goaltending that Carolina is throwing out there night in and night out now. I mean, it's top, it's top 10 in the league, it's maybe top five in the league. You know, yeah, we Freddie's allowed eight goals in seven games since coming back. The Hurricanes haven't allowed a goal in seven periods. Is a clean, well, I mean, they had two empty net goals, but it's a clean third period for the goalies. And then nothing. Freddie shuts out Detroit. And Kachetkov shuts out Montreal tonight. The goaltending's been absolutely dynamite. Um, let's talk about the penalty kill real quick. Only three for three tonight. Uh, only 11 for their last 11 since allowing three in six against Washington. Prior to the three and six, the Canes had killed 27 in a row. <laughs> so 27 in a row, give up three, 11 in a row. It's at 86%, folks. Just sh- just shy of it. Just shy of 86%. If you can combine your power play and your penalty kill, and it comes in at eh, between 100 and 105, pretty good. I mean, that's not elite, but you're pretty good if it, com- if it can come in between 100 and 105. Yeah, you kind of want your power play to be around 25%, right? Uh, and you want your penalty kill to be around 80, a little bit higher. I mean, the good, all the good teams are probably between 105 and 110. So the Hurricanes are at about uh, almost 87%. I think it was almost 86% on the penalty kill for the season and at about 26%. So they're uh, coming in at a cool like 112 percent. Yeah, that's uh, that's what Carolina is right now. The penalty kill is the best in the sport. They got a, a shorthanded goal today, and it it all started. And you heard it uh, at the very beginning. It started with a save by Kachetkov, and then uh, a good fight for a puck, and then a Tavo Teravainen diving poke ahead, and Jordan Stahl doing the rest. Stahl, he'll be in the shootout next time Carolina's in the shootout. Stahl goes off the left post and in. That was the first goal of the game. Um, the penalty kill was otherwise great. Shorthanded goals are not the best way to gauge whether or not a, a penalty kill is good. It certainly, it, it helps. It doesn't hurt. But the most important thing you can do is not allow the power play goal. And the Hurricanes have now gone... 53 games this year in 50. What do they play? They played 75, right? So they've only allowed a power play goal in 22 games this season, which is by far the best in the NHL. Only 22 games in 22 games. Have they allowed a power play goal? And by the way, since that game in Ottawa, which was, uh, 48 games ago, 48 games ago, they've only allowed 16 power play goals. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Power play one, one for two fortunate, but maybe it was by design. I don't know. Jake Gensel shot from the high slot. Seth Jarvis providing the net front goes off his leg, uh, bounces right to Aho, who, uh, just, you know, quickly nailed it into an empty net. Um, because Montembeau was at the top of, the, of his crease trying to fight through Jarvis to stop the shot. Never got to him. Went to Ajo, put it right behind Montembeau. That was the, the goal that made it 2 nothing, and probably the goal that ended the game. Then, of course, the Jarvis uh, empty netter really ended the game. Um, and I thought this, first of all, uh, the goaltending, again, three goals allowed in their last four games. Goaltenders. So nothing tonight from Piotr. Nothing Thursday from Freddie. The game before that was Pittsburgh, right? And they allowed just the um just the two and two empty net goals. And I think the game before that was Toronto, right? And Freddie allowed one. I mean it's good. It's a lot of good things going on um 
defensively and in net for Carolina. Uh, all right, so I was curious about this. And we don't have a lot of time left here. Um, we don't have a lot of time left here, but I was curious about this. How does Carolina stack up with the rest of the top of the Eastern Conference, the t- the eight playoff teams, and then specifically with the top four? Carolina, the Rangers, Boston, Florida. And you know, we might have to put Toronto and Tampa in that category, but I'm really just using the two, the four teams that are fighting it out for the president's trophy. Looks like the Rangers are going to get it. Credit, all credit to the Rangers. Uh, they have really been on fire of late. So I, I went through it and I looked. I have all the records for all the top teams against playoff teams. Uh, and here's the ranking, I guess you will. Uh, the Rangers have the best record against the playoff group, against the top eight in the East, the other seven teams. They're 14, 7, and 1. Um, I, don't, I, didn't, I, don't see, I didn't see their schedule left, so I don't know how many of the teams they still have to play. But the Rangers at 14, 7, and 1, 29 points in those th- 22 games. They have the best record. Carolina's next, the 12, 6, and 2 against the playoff group. Uh, and we, have, we know we have two left with Boston and one with Washington. Boston will come on Thursday. Washington is Friday. And then I think Boston is the third to last game of the season in Boston. So we're going to get to know the Bruins here down the stretch. Much like Duke and NC State are going to get to know each other for the third time in, what, 19 days? Should be fun, right? Tomorrow, 19 days or 18 or 20 days. Either way, um, so the Hurricanes 12-6-2. and two. Boss, I'm uh, sorry, Florida's next at 10, 7, and 3. And Boston is after that at 9, 6, and 3. Uh, and then I thought it would be interesting to see how did you do just against the top four or the other top three? Uh, the Rangers, this is where the Rangers have separated. Also, um, they have kind of broke even against the best teams in the West. But anyway, the Rangers are 6, 3, and 0 oh against the other top three and the Rangers are done with that because we only played uh, Carolina. The Rangers only played three times and you only play the other division in your conference uh, three times each. So six, three and O the Rangers are done. Carolina could uh, tie that if you beat Boston two more times. Um, Boston is next at three, three and one and Florida is last. I was surprised this Florida is last against the other three best teams. Uh, three, four, and two on the year. Does that matter? Probably not. It probably doesn't matter. Um, so, but I, I was just curious how it looked against the other best teams. Uh, the one thing I will say is Boston has done the best against the West. Boston is nine, one, and five against the West playoff teams. Uh, the Hurricanes have done the worst, 5-9-0 and oh, against the West. Um, and again, these are just the playoff teams, although they did sweep Vegas, split with Colorado. So I'm not, uh, I'm not pessimistic about the Hurricanes maybe, you know, being a uh, Stanley Cup champion just because they haven't done well against the West. I don't hate it. I think the Hurricanes will be fine uh, when they get to the Stanley Cup and win it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, no, it's well, as it as good a chance as anybody. Uh, all right, quick, uh, some quick comments, and then we'll wrap this up on a Saturday. And again, always um, value all of you who kind of hang out wherever you are, especially on a Saturday night. You have so much more important, so many more important things to do. Excuse me. Uh, I'm not allowed to show you this. Excuse me. Oh, it was delicious. Again, I uh, can't recommend the Peachful enough from Highland Brewing. Um, so Matt said he forgot the Hurricanes were on. Seriously, Matt? Forgot the Hurricanes were on? What are you doing? You watch women's basketball? You could be watching women's basketball. I don't know. Uh, but the uh, the men, they're uh, Alabama leads Clemson by seven. Oh, that's going to end. 
It's going to be a seven point uh, seven point Alabama win. Um, who knows what it's going to be? What the final score? But Clemson battled. Uh, Alabama is just really good. Obviously, they proved that against North Carolina. Uh, let's see who was uh, Agent Shadow. Uh, said it was uh, it's good to see Piotr uh, break out of his slump. Dude, what slump? He gave up. The Washington game was not a slump. And by no means was that a slump. The um, the Pittsburgh game was actually worse than the Washington game, and he only gave up two. Um, and he wasn't even bad in that game. He just he allowed himself to be small on both goals. Uh, and then uh, James, uh, with a shout out from California, uh, talking about paying Jarvis all the money. And I do agree. They should pay Jarvis pretty much all the money, at least what's left. Um, but yeah, Piotr's not, Piotr was not in a slump. Piotr um, has been great. So uh, Carolina's in a very good goaltending spot right now. And we are in a very good spot to say thank you very much. Um, four days with no Canes Corner podcast? How is that possible? Well, let me just say what you should do is subscribe to this. Uh, like it, whatever it is. Because you never know if we're going to pop up with like a random you know, midway through this five-day break because the next podcast will be Thursday night. You never know. We might just have a conversation about life, liberty, and the pursuit of a Stanley Cup. Uh, but anyway, I can't promise that, but you, you just never know. So if you subscribe to it, boom, there's a notification right away. Yeah, and we always do these things live, so uh, why not? Anyway, uh, appreciate your time. Uh, Aluminum Company of North Carolina, shout out to you. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. No place like it. Sammy Hanna and his crew do a great job. And you can always get them online, aluminumcompany.com. Free no obligation estimate there. Uh, and isn't that good? All right, as we say goodbye, um, seven games left. You're just trying to get ready for the playoffs, but you're also trying to stack points because you want to, if you can, stay ahead of Boston and Florida. And who knows? Maybe you catch the Rangers, but you want to stay ahead of Boston and Florida. So if you get to the Eastern Conference Finals, you've got home ice advantage. They won the season series against Florida. Maybe they can do the same with Boston. Win the game on Thursday. You win the season series from the Bruins. Anyway, so there's still a lot to play for. We're not done. We're not done checking off boxes. Until Thursday, this has been the Canes Corner Podcast, and I thank you very much for everything. And here's the key play from tonight, just to say goodbye. You mentioned you got his dancing shoes on here tonight. Put it out in front, good shot call with a monstrous save. Sauce from Suzuki to create that chance from the goal line. Now shorthanded chance, Stahl catching up to it. Stahl goes in, he scores! Shorthanded, the captain has put Carolina in the lead, 1-0.